Hello and welcome to the Apple Insider Podcast. This is your host, Stephen Robles, and today we're going to talk about some of the features coming with iOS 16.4, new shortcut steps. There's also images of the iPhone 15 floating around. I'm going to talk about that. Apple might be close to a non-invasive blood glucose sensor, and I would like to discuss what Apple devices have a soul. This episode is brought to you by our friends at ZocDoc, a free app to find and book a top-rated doctor near you. And joining me to discuss whether or not he has a soul, just kidding, we're not going to do that, my friend William Gallagher. How's it going, William? It's going very well, thank you. And I've decided that I'm going to speak at twice normal speed for the entire trip. No, I can't do it. It's fine. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. There was a very troubling poll that happened on Twitter just a couple days ago, and I asked our listeners, you know, whatever, if you listen to Apple Insider, what speed you listen to podcasts. Now, I pulled up the poll right now. I don't know if you've seen the recent results. Not the final one, no. As it stands, <laughs> yes. 65% listen at 1x speed. Okay. All right. Six, we have 65% of our listeners are human beings. <laughs> now, 1.25 time speed, which is just a little faster than normal, 14%. Mm. 1.5, one and a half is 12%. And 9% of our listeners, William, listen at 2x speed. Okay. I think they might be chat oh. GPT listening. I think that's what that is. Okay. Now, I, w I really wanted to think about this episode and say, should I talk slower to annoy the people that are listening faster, or should I try to talk faster and then it messes up their, their time playing speed? You know what I'm saying, William? There is actually, I'm convinced there is a podcast training school somewhere that teaches its presenters to speak three words at a time. So you get a little bit of a sentence and then a pause and it goes on. And it ha once you hear that, it's so common. No, yeah. no, no. I do not talk about. I don't talk like that. I don't. I don't think. Now I'm going to be self conscious about it. But I'm. No, you I think I'm going to try and talk a little faster in this episode. This way, those who are listening at two x speed is going to be so fast they won't even be able to understand what I'm saying, and then they'll have to go back down to one point five at least speed. What do you think, Williams? How about you do that and I do excruciatingly long pauses. <laughs> between words to defeat all of those things, those apps that cut out uh, silences. So then yeah. no one's happy. Is that what you're saying? This way, the, the fast speed can't listen and the, and the 1X. So yeah, that's a great idea. You could also look for episodes that have transcripts and just read it. You no, know? William, I'm not like you. I'm not going to be reading scripts to every show before I watch it. I'm not, I'm not, doing, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. Oh, right. I not did just it. read, uh, I went to Apple's event last weekend and just before it, uh, Sharper was released and I didn't have time to get to see it. I read the script and the script is great. So I'm really looking forward this coming weekend to enjoying Sharper. Now, wait a minute. Doesn't reading the script then spoil whatever's happening in the show? Like, you know literally what's going to happen. Yes. I mean, so doesn't that <laughs> cheapen the actual viewing experience, knowing exactly what's going to happen? Well, yes. But the thing is, the script is a script, and I enjoy that. Um, I'm not, I won't be coming to the surprises as fresh, although I already know from bits I've seen that there have been quite subtle but very significant changes between the page and the final draft of it, the mm -hmm. edited version. And it's quite interesting to think about why. I got the, the kind of pleasure of the story and the enjoyment and uh, very good dialogue from the script. This time I will just enjoy seeing what they've done with it because I think the production design looks great. Mm -hmm. See how actors have played it. I've read scripts where on the page I've loved a character and on screen I have loathed them. So I'm fascinated to see. Huh. I, I'd have watched it straight away if I could have done, but I couldn't. So Okay. So the, you actually went to a quasi-Apple event over there. It was a BAFTA Awards. And was this like an Apple-held event, Apple-hosted? No, 100% sure why well, they called it a BAFTA brunch, really, because it was the same weekend as the BAFTA Awards here. Uh, but it was a full-on Apple event. It was Apple TV Plus and nothing else, really. It wasn't even at BAFTA's head office in, the, in London. It was at a place called the Mount Street Restaurant, which I've not heard of before but he's utterly gorgeous oh. i think it's just like walking to somebody's house with incredible artwork one of the staff was telling me there was a matisse on the wall somewhere you couldn't see it for all the people but the artwork was gorgeous <laughs> and some brilliant uh people okay there i i had a had a ball yeah. oh that's wonderful that's that's very exciting I hope to be invited to an Apple event someday. Do you count that as being invited to an Apple event? Will you say you've been to? Well, well, I should say I was there. I was explicitly invited uh, because I'm also deputy chair of the Writers Guild of Great Britain. So it wasn't an Apple Insider right. thing. I, I like the fact there was no speech, there was no presentation. It was just a lot of Apple TV cast and crew. 
That's getting cool. there, including Annette Bedland from Ted Lasso, and I didn't tell her that I don't watch Ted Lasso. I was gonna. <laughs> she was very, very nice. You know, uh, that didn't come out uh, in conversation. I see. Interesting. Well, who are you? It wasn't the greatest opening line I've ever given anybody, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we actually want to get to some news because there was yes, news. Sorry, I, sorry. Iowa sixteen point four developer beta one came out literally right after I finished editing last week's episode, and so. A little late on it, but I want to go through because there's some interesting stuff. Very quickly, some five-star reviews from our great listeners. Clover Lav from USA. Johan Zanstra from the Netherlands. Kepstein01 from the USA. We actually formulated a review in ChatGPT and used that. And uh, it was actually pretty good. So if you don't know what to write in those reviews in Apple Podcasts, hmm. just ask ChatGPT or Bing Search. That's fine, too. Whatever you'd like. Merglet from Sweden. And Noah Law from Germany. Uh, he's also a YouTuber, so... Uh, thank you guys for the five-star reviews. All right, two quick things before we get to 16.4. One, a listener, Lewis, he emails me pretty much every week after the show. He always has fun insight. He informed me that there was actually an Apple-branded like seat cushion that was a thing in 1984 <laughs> at the Super Bowl that year. Do you know what that is? No, I haven't. So for people in the stands or something, or, or fans at home? I'm... For people in the stands, this was wow. the original Apple Box 1984 throw pillow, and they like blanketed the stadium in 1985. San Francisco 49ers faced off against the Miami Dolphins, and there was like one of these pillows on a ton of the seats, and I had, I had no idea that this was a thing. What's the capacity of um, wherever in the world the Super Bowl thing is is held the stadium i mean it's tens of thousands at least so you'd think they would be out there on ebay by now or unless they've all worn away <laughs> I, I think i think they are i'm gonna send you this picture in slack real quick so you could see it but this was like a real thing that happened i had no idea apple seat cushion wow. 1984 goodness yeah mm -hmm. so so that was very cool very cool piece of info and then finally uh, this is from my friend nate he has a question for you william Me. specifically y uh, yes he wants to know do you say the words rubbish or rubbage? And uh, is there a difference or, or like, how does that work over there in the UK? I've never in my entire life heard the word rubbish. Okay. okay. So do you... Is it a real word? Hang on. Wait a minute. Define word rubbish, as spelled as it sounds. Cruft. Oh, it's a computing term, apparently. A job... No, it's rooted me through to the definition of cruft. Yeah, that's which... what it's saying. I have no clue. He's just making up words. That's what's going on. I guess so. But do you say rubbish? Is that something you say often? Yes. Uh, I read something I've written and then that word comes out quite routinely. Yes. Yes. Okay. No, there was a chance there for you to say something nice and you just passed it out <laughs> completely. But no, no, it's, it's too late now. No. Okay. And then, I'm sorry. We have one reviewer that just wants you to say bottle of water on air. I'm, so, I'm sorry. They were what? I want you to say bottle of water. Why does this sound like one of those spy films where they'll record, they've recorded a ransom note. They've got every word they need except I the know, phrase. I think, I think they just want to hear it in your accent. Okay. Um, warily. Bottle of water. Okay, oh, uh, very good. That? Bottle of water. <laughs> I'm self-conscious now. <laughs> we'll make it a soundbite file uh, that you could download in the show notes. Uh, you can just, maybe that, that could be your text tone. Every time you get a text, you hear William say, bottle of water. Please tell me I didn't sound like that. was Dick <laughs> Van Dyke in Mary <laughs> Poppins, <laughs> that was. You sounded nothing like that. Okay, iOS 16 beta 1, iOS 16.4, a bunch of new things. There's 31 new emoji. William doesn't use emoji, so it doesn't Yay. affect him. Emoji. Yeah. 31, 31 new emoji, including like a uh -huh. shaking face, I guess like to feel surprised or look surprised, communicate surprised. I don't know. That, sorry, just stop there. <laughs> emoji is supposed to be really clear. And the people who love it say it's better than writing because there's no way of misunderstanding. And you don't know what that emoji is supposed to mean. So they've lost even their apparent value. So Listen, yeah. emojis take on their own meaning once people get their hands on them. You know, they... they what, like actual <laughs> words, like rubbish and things <laughs> like that. Exactly mm. right. Now... Web push notifications on iOS. This is an interesting update. You have this on Mac. So if you go to a website, say the New York Times, you might get a request that says, do you want to allow the New York Times to send you notifications? And you would say no, but you can actually allow those notifications. And then that website can send push notifications on your Mac. Well, that's coming to iOS. And so websites will be able to prompt you whether or not to send notifications. I imagine there will be a, in the notification settings on your iPhone, a place where you could turn off any places where you have enabled notifications. But 
it is an interesting, you know, if there are brands or companies that don't have an app yet, oh, I see. but would like to be able yeah. to send notifications, I imagine this would be good for them. I don't know if it's something that I will enable. I don't typically enable web push notifications, but... No, I'm not particularly against them. I just, I've never been on a site where uh, I was compelled to. I mean, it's usually it's the very first thing they ask. And if it's a site I've never been to before, I don't know yet whether I want it to them. And then I forget about it completely. But um, that's a very good point about places that don't have apps. Hmm, yeah. I thought of that. And then also Mastodon links will show rich previews in messages. Good. It's a small thing. But I do think it's interesting that Apple is actually putting any effort into supporting a social network like Mastodon. Recently, Phil Schiller showed up on Mastodon. I haven't seen like Tim Cook or anybody. I, don't, I haven't seen any other Apple execs no. on Mastodon. But I think it's interesting that they actually acknowledge its existence and actually mm. add a feature for it. So that's cool. Also, focus filters. You'll now have the ability to set your always on display setting per focus filter. So if you want your always on display on during like work focus or other focuses you could do that or foci and then turn it off in the evenings or like your sleep focus so a very cool nice to have that in your focus mode settings developer beta profiles are actually going away right now if you wanted to install the public beta or the developer beta you have to install a profile on your device and then you get access to the betas well going forward there's actually just going to be a setting in your device that'll say do you want to be on the developer beta the public beta or off meaning like public release and i think this is to crack down on some of the sharing of profiles so non-paying people getting access to the developer betas because you do have to pay like if you want the developer betas you have to pay 99 dollars a year to actually be listed as a developer and you get the betas like a few days early after wwdc the public beta doesn't usually come out for like a month so you do get earlier access then but it seems like Apple's trying to crack down. I remember back in the day, I don't know if you ever did this, William, but <laughs> when before even profiles, the like ICS or whatever files would just be like floating around the internet. So if you wanted to install the developer beta of iOS, you literally download this file onto your Mac and then you you know manually install it on your iPhone. Hopefully not from a shady website that then installs some malware, but right. that's that's how we did it back in the day. Did you ever do that? Uh, so just to check, the public beta isn't dangerous enough for you. The developer isn't dangerous for you. <laughs> you want to go down the dodgy back of the yeah yeah yeah. It was the black market betas. I mean, oh, they right. they were yeah. like you know unofficial, and I you know that's probably why Apple went to the profile system. So there's not like files floating around of the beta installs. But now this seems like an even more secure way of you know deciding what beta program you're on and even less chance of people getting the betas that aren't supposed to, I guess, like develop. Uh, the HomeKit architecture upgrade returns in 16.4. We will see uh, how that goes. Uh, this has been a rough yeah. road ever since the original HomeKit architecture came out. So we'll see. The podcast app does get some improvements and features, namely in that up next screen on the home tab of your podcast player. If you use Apple Podcasts, you'll be able to like remove episodes from that listing. And you also get a little more control over the up next list of like the episodes that will be playing after your current one. You'll be able to move some around easier and remove them from that list a little easier. So it's better, still not as powerful as like the up next features you find in Pocket Cast or Overcast but it's nice to see moving in the right direction. And there's actually going to be a distinct channels tab where if you go to your library, you can see like shows, latest episodes, and channels will be its own deal. And so if you listen to the Apple Insider podcast, you'll see the Apple Insider channel also listed in your app. And then you can see the other shows that are a part of that channel. So nice updates there. Again, really looking forward to more power features into the uh, Apple podcast app, especially like being able to auto skip the first 20 seconds of an episode, things like that, which I thought I I'd convinced you to try Pocket Cast for that feature alone. But then it seems like you went back to the Apple Podcast app because yeah. like it wasn't compelling enough. Yep. Um, I don't remember when I tried Pocket Casts, but I know I did. And I, Overcast is such a depressing name. Is it just because I'm in Britain and it usually is? But yeah. <laughs> wasn't there at least there may, I don't know if it's still around, but I remember there was something called Downcast. Downcast is still well, that's, even, well, that's even more miserable. Why downcast it. all my soul? Yes. That's right. And uh, Marco Arman, who makes Overcast, he also has an app called Forecast. Did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay. Forecast, it's actually a great Mac app. It's, it's totally free. And basically, if you make podcasts, 
and you want to add chapters, custom chapter art, and kind of encode your MP3 player with all that fancy stuff before publishing it, Forecast is a free app that lets you do that and gives you really good control over chapter titles, linking chapters, chapter artwork, and all that. So I'll put a link to a, Forecast. I have a lot of time for developers, but I do think sometimes they should just be very careful which two words they put together. I mean, you get it, over meaning better, but overcast is miserable. Oh, Downcast okay. is just downloads and podcasts put together. But it's, uh, the worst, I think, is procreate. I don't really think they thought about that <laughs> one at all, really. But, you know, or maybe they did. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. You yeah. know, I've never... Never thought about that name in isolation before, but yeah, that's... And then finally, iOS 16.4, there's a bunch of new shortcuts actions that will be available. Things like the silence unknown caller setting, you'll be able to add that to a shortcut, which also means you'll be able to add that to an automation, which is really cool. Mm. If you don't have that toggle on, on your iPhone, go to the settings app, go to phone, and then silence unknown callers. If a person is not in your contacts, they will be sent directly to voicemail and it won't even ring your phone. An amazing feature. William's too popular and too famous to use it because he gets phone calls from all over the UK. People asking for his an interview, inviting him to the BAFTA awards, so he can't use it. In all seriousness, I lost work once because of that feature. Well, and so know. far this month, I've had a dozen uh, things come through that I would have well, lost if I didn't have that. I mean, nothing big, but all really fun stuff I would have missed out on. So I want that feature. I just can't use it. So yeah, yeah. I know that is a, it's a wonderful humble brag right there, William. I really appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, okay. maybe I've been asked to be in a movie and I don't know it because I have that setting on. There you go. Exactly. Yes, that could, could be. be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe you would read the script if I was in it. Anyway, uh, mm-hmm. set. <laughs> you can set stage manager, like enable and disable in the shortcuts actions, set true tone, Announce notifications. So like if you have AirPods, whether or not it like announces who's calling or texting when notifications come in. Shut down is actually part of a shortcut. So actually completely shut down your device. Lock screen settings, always on display will now also be a shortcuts action, which is really nice. If you just want to quickly change that setting, turn on always on display or turn it off. Uh, Set VPN, airdrop receiving, everyone contacts or no one. So you can set airdrop in shortcuts. That's really cool. Night shift. And then one of my favorite features on HomePod is intercom, where I can intercom the whole house. I can intercom individual rooms, which is really cool, especially with my kids telling them to come to dinner or whatever. You can actually now have an intercom step in a shortcut. So you can have like pre-done text and then add the intercom step. And when you run the shortcut, the HomePod that you select in the intercom step will voice the text that you typed. Or you can even create a shortcut that asks for input so you can run the shortcut and it could say, what do you want to say? You type it in or you speak it in and then it will intercom whatever you want. And so hmm. I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a shortcut that's come for dinner, uh, go to bed, brush your teeth, all those things that I tell my kids. And then I could just run that shortcut uh, right from my phone and then all the home pods will tell my kids for me. Um, surely we should because you can open files, you can run files. There must be a way to get it to say in my accent, bottle of water <laughs> over announcement. Well, okay. oh yeah. Once, well, when I put that audio file in the show notes, useful things like that. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, mm. listen, uh, listeners think I'm joking, but I'm going to create an audio file of William <laughs> saying "bottle of water," little MP3 file. You can download it in the show notes of this episode. Please, and you don't. can put, you okay. can use that as your text or ringtone, or create a shortcut and intercom your entire house. For anybody in the UK who would have heard of this, uh, there used to be a, a cartoon character here called Muttley. I don't think it was played in the states. Maybe uh, Dick Dastardly and Muttley. Do you remember this? Muttley mm-hmm. had a very, very famous um, laugh, and that is my text tone for when my wife oh. uh, texts me. And I have been standing in some very serious meetings when. <laughs> has come out of my uh, jacket (laughs) pocket. That's worth it. Me talking, not so much. Okay. That's that's pretty funny. (laughs) I once worked a job where I wanted something really ominous to play when my boss would try to contact me. And so I had um, the Carmina Burana intro play as like a text tone. The, uh, (laughs) You know, it was really good. Okay. If I put that as a text tone file uh, for our listeners, so can I put your bottle of water so each of us have an embarrassing audio? Uh, how about, as a compromise, you do this podcast in stereo and have your voice out of the left channel and the recording out of the right <laughs> okay. for that song so that we can experience the wonder oh, at the be... same time or just wonder about the experience. Yeah. 
Mm, for that would not work good stereo. Anyway, mm. so those are SIO 16.4 beta one. Probably not going to see the official release till March. I would say mid March, late March. So it'll be a while till we see these, but the public beta is also available. I put that on my iPad mini. I'm not uh, so daring as to put it on my iPhone, but I did put it on my iPad mini to try some of the features and they're pretty cool. Now this was pretty big news. Mark Gurman from Bloomberg was stating that Apple has made a breakthrough in non-invasive blood glucose monitoring. And this would be something that could eventually work into the Apple watch. And so it says it will take some time. The Whatever the breakthrough has occurred is technologically, meaning being able to get blood glucose without invasive, you know, without like a needle or anything like that. Mm. But the technology has to shrink, has to be able to fit into a watch. So it might take a year, several years before we actually see that announced in an Apple watch. So probably not this year. But supposedly they've been working on this for like 12 years and they finally reached a proof of concept stage just recently. So again, being Mark Gurman, you know, I would take this uh, as like, okay, like this is likely a thing. And man, I cannot, I cannot imagine when Apple announces an Apple Watch that does blood glucose monitoring to a degree that is reliable and accurate. Hmm. I mean... The Apple Watch will be the device for so many people, like the non-negotiable, like almost at that point, probably more than a phone, there will be a segment of the population that will want the Apple Watch very much for that. And I just see the Apple Watch long term really being the health and fitness slash adventure, especially with the Apple Watch Ultra, like that is the device's core competency. You know, when the Apple Watch first launched, it was very much Apple trying to make it everything to everyone. Like it's your notifications and apps, you know, apps are a thing, but I really feel like as time has moved on and seeing where they focus a lot of their attention, usually it's health features. Usually it's, you know, temperature, a cycle, you know, all that kind of stuff is what they've worked in recently. And now if blood glucose, I mean, this would be huge, be huge. Amazing stuff. Yeah. Although Android will have it as soon afterwards as they can. Hang on. Android watches, uh, well, they'll have something like it very soon afterwards. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, the Pixel Watch is a thing, right? You can get one of those now. Hmm. Pixel hmm. Watch, maybe? I just, I just cannot get out of the fact, out of my head, that the one Android watch I chose had this gorgeous round display, but it was playing, it had rectangular warning dialogues come up on it with the yes yeah. or no button below the circle, so you couldn't even see where they were. I just, yeah, it feels... I'm sure things have got a bit better yeah. since then, but I'm not going to try. So a- Apple is, I think, much farther along in the wrist device game. Mm. I just, I think they they progressed very fast, and they they did it right. I mean, I think they chose the right form factor and are iterating on that well. Like the display is amazing. You have, what do you have the Series Seven right now? I have Series Seven, but uh, over a couple of weekends ago. Um, my sister-in-law had a problem with her uh, her iPhone and things, and I was doing setting up a Series One, no, it might even be Series Zero watch, and I was so surprised actually how good it was. I remember it being very slow, yeah. but she's very happy with it; doesn't want to change. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they did. They've done it well. And I, and I will say, my mom is actually using a Series Three, which was just recently stopped like being sold. You know, Apple was selling the Series Three all the way up until this past September. Yeah. And Like it is obviously slower than like series seven, eight and the ultra, of course, but it's still good. Like it still does all the things. She does workouts. She can listen to podcasts in her AirPods and all that. So, I mean, it's it's still a good watch. I mean, they have longevity, even though like you kind of think of the Apple watch as a a less lifespan than things like phones and stuff, but they've been holding up pretty good. And even the battery life, like she can get through a day, like even doing like a walking workout. So that's good. I I went from, uh, I got a repaired series naught. And it came back as a Series 1. But I went from 1 oh. to then Series 4 to then Series 7. And as much as I quite fancy the the 8, and I'm sure I will the 9, I don't need it. I love the 7. So Yeah, it's a, it's a great watch. Also on a side note, my mom just got AirPods Pro. Mm. And then my wife just got AirPods Pro. Wait, wait, wait. Your family now can't hear you talking. That's <laughs> why you need shortcuts to send announcements to the head. And now it makes sense. Okay. <laughs> That's- that is right. Uh, th- that joke has been made several times when okay. I'm trying to talk to my wife. And she's like, uh, what? <laughs> you know, so. But, A, I feel bad because my mom, she listens to podcasts, podcasts that I do and other podcasts. And her listening experience up until the AirPods Pro 
recently, like in the last couple of weeks, has been just to listen through the iPhone speakers, mm -hmm. which, you know, I've heard Marco Arment, who makes Overcast, we just mentioned, he actually talks about the analytics of where people listen to podcasts. And there's actually a very large percentage of people that just play them from their phone speaker. Hmm. Like they just listen out loud, which, you know, for podcasts, it's fine. You know, it's people talking. It's not really like high fidelity audio. But when she first tried the AirPods Pro and listened to a podcast, she was like, this sounds amazing. <laughs> this, <laughs> this sounds incredible. And I was like, oh man, I, I, I missed the ball. I should have, I should have gotten her AirPods Pro like way long ago because yeah, they sound amazing. <laughs> And like even just listening to podcasts, it's a it's a much better experience. You remember the thing about Elvis Presley when he was well alive, really, um, and making records. He would not listen uh, to the studio mix. He would go out and have it rooted through a, a transistor radio at the time because that's how most of my listeners will oh. hear it. He said, "Oh, that was." Quite astute, very impressive. I watched his biopic and I never saw that part. You <laughs> should have should have included that. I mean, no, for real, like that's interesting. Yeah. I, you know, I think if you look at like the music industry, obviously they mix and master and like studio settings or whatever. But I always thought like that's an interesting question. If you produce audio, mm. what do you gear your EQ and com like what do you gear all your settings toward? Like what end device? Is it the highest end pair of headphones you can buy? Is it yeah. a high end pair of studio speakers? Or do you also make sure it sounds good playing through the car speakers? And I know in my hamster mobile, which is a 2011 Kia Soul, every podcast is super bass heavy because I think they just wanted to like make that car. I don't know. Do you remember the Kia Soul commercial with the hamsters? No. Like when I say that, do you know what I'm talking about? No. I don't. You don't uh... Yes. It, it, there was like this hamster and it was in a car. Oh my okay. word. Okay. I, I will find the commercial and put it in show notes. <laughs> okay. Please rush to. <laughs> uh, because the like the original Kia Soul was like marketed as a music car. Like you get the Kia Soul because you enjoy music and that's uh that's what you do. But I basically that means they just made it really bass heavy. As long as you listen to it the way you listen there's a bad, bad habit in radio of listening to the output from your desk instead of the input from you know, the internet or the speakers or anywhere. And so you're going along thinking the desk is brilliant, the sound's fantastic, and you don't know the transmitters died half an hour ago. It's um <laughs> yeah, it's quite a common bad experience. Right. Well, I essentially you can enjoy it after the show. It's literally hamsters. Uh, dancing and riding in a Kia Soul. It is the uh, 2010 Kia Soul commercial. I yeah. see it. I'm not, I don't 100% believe it, but I see it. Okay. <laughs> well, seeing is believing. So anyway, that is also in the show notes. This episode is brought to you by ZocDoc. Guys, I just used ZocDoc a couple weeks ago to book my own annual physical. I just recently moved. I didn't know the doctors in the area. So I just opened the ZocDoc app, which you could download for free at ZocDoc.com slash Apple Insider. I looked for a patient-reviewed doctor, found one that was highly rated, and takes my insurance because that's the magic of ZocDoc. I went to the appointment. It went great. I'm done. That was it. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. No more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favorite doctor you haven't met yet. And I love the doctor that I met. It was four-and-a-half-star rated doctor. And I did love the experience. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. You can even book telehealth appointments right in the ZocDoc app. Some as early as today. If you need to get a quick appointment, ZocDoc is the place to go and book it. So go to ZocDoc.com slash Apple Insider and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z O C D O C dot com slash Apple Insider, ZocDoc dot com slash Apple Insider. Our thanks to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode. iPhone 15, William, we have images of the iPhone 15. This also came out late last week, like after the episode already aired, but there are images of the supposed iPhone 15. 9 to 5 Mac had an exclusive with some renders as well. Might be titanium, looks titanium-ish. The bezels look smaller. There might be rounded edges. But I think the biggest deal, there is a literal image, a photo of the supposed iPhone 15. It looks like a brushed titanium finish on the bottom of this phone. And notably, it is USB-C mm. instead of lightning. Okay. Is, is this just me? It doesn't feel like... 
a dramatic discovery that would change the world because you know what an iPhone looks like. You know what a USB-C port looks like. I mean, it has to happen eventually. You know, with the whole EU <laughs> oh, yeah. regulation, like we knew this was going to happen. It seemed likely this year. I, I will be glad for it. I will be glad, like, once the iPhone goes USB-C, I think I will be safe to slowly rid myself of all the lightning cables in my house, because, at least the ones that I use, because my whole family is still going to have lightning. <laughs> That's true. They, they don't upgrade every year like I do. But, you know, I charge my AirPods with MagSafe. I, I really never plug in my AirPods case. I have my AirPods Max. They have this little adapter that I use that I charge with the Max stand. So I think I think I can get rid of lightning forever. <laughs> Once this phone comes out. I have been using Lightning in my car. My wife, Angela, has CarPlay. Uh, in fact, she connects the iPhone through Lightning to that. Mine's just a car stereo bit. Uh, but in the last week, it's just completely ceased to recognize the phone exists. So it might as well be any cable I like, really. It doesn't make a difference anymore. Traveling is going to be like the better life experience. Because every time I travel, I always have to think like, what... Cables do I bring? Yeah. And pretty soon, I think I'll just be able to bring USB-C cables and then maybe like a MagSafe charger. Hopefully, the MagSafe Duo gets updated with the iPhone this fall so it yeah. also has a USB-C port but, because that would be really weird if there was a MagSafe Duo with Lightning but the iPhone with USB-C. I hope that doesn't be. But think of all those hotel rooms, those hundreds of thousands of hotel rooms that have finally got USB-A in there. <laughs> and now... You're just Listen, not happy. Okay. Now, this, this would be an interesting question for you, William. I don't trust any hotel USB port. I don't know those USB ports. I don't know those USB A ports or C ports. Like, I, they're, they're not familiar to me. I don't plug anything into those. The little lamps that have USB ports in them that you could supposedly try. I don't do that. I don't trust them. Oh, well, now you're worrying me. Um, do, you, do you just plug stuff in there willy-nilly? I mean, you just plug it in your phones, charging with a basically, hotel lamp? Uh, yes. Um, are you telling me that they are sucking data down or malwareifying something? <laughs> oh, no, they can't do that. But This is what I'm know, thinking. I, so. I don't know what kind of wattage that thing's putting out. I don't know what kind of dirty power are coming from these hotel lamps. I ain't doing that. Oh, mm. Okay. So it's they could physically damage the iPhone. That's I mean I I doubt that too. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's going to damage the iPhone, but I don't know. I just I don't I don't trust them. You're just really scaring me for no reason. Really. <laughs> okay. Listeners come to my aid, uh, basic Apple guy. I bet you dollars to donuts as the saying goes that he does not plug them into those random hotel USB ports. I don't think he does. Okay, but pounds to pumpkins. <laughs> I bet that I'm going to forget the detail of this and just carry the worry with me into the future. Oh, no, don't do it. You don't have to worry. No, you don't have to worry. Just never do it. Just never plug them into those USB <laughs> ports. And then you'll be fine. No okay. worries. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm, I'm looking forward to the iPhone having USB-C. I would love a brushed titanium look on the iPhone too. I think that would be nice. We've had this super shiny surgical grade stainless steel around the iPhone for... Since the iPhone 12, very fingerprinty mm. uh, on the Pro models, at least. So I'm, I'm down for something different. You know, the regular iPhone 14 and 13 models, they have that brushed aluminum, yeah. which looks nice. I'm down. Would you like a titanium iPhone? I'm trying to remember what I've had that's been titanium before. I seem to remember uh, there was a PowerBook that was titanium and it all rubbed off or something. The paint did. So it looked horrible after a bit. Oh. I don't think that's ever happened with anything else. But no. um, I'm there you go. I'll put it right back at you. Be wary of titanium. <laughs> no reason. Can I share my Apple Watch Ultra uh, is supposedly titanium, but in my normal practice of swinging oh, no. my arms around no. like a gorilla yeah. around the house, I banged it into my kitchen island oh. uh, the other day. And uh, yeah, there's a couple nicks there in, in the titanium right along the edge. In an Apple Watch Ultra. In the Apple Watch Ultra. I am convinced <laughs> your kitchen was built in order to be at a watch trap. Things must be at just the right height to do this. It so. is, uh, I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm going to try and take a macro photo here and send it to you. You can see it. The screen. The, oh, this the, is going to be painful. The Sapphire screen is still so, perfect. Like the Sapphire screen, I've never scratched or cracked the screen of the Sapphire screen of an Apple Watch. You know, all the uh, stainless steels and the titanium ones, but the titanium part, yeah, I just, I, somehow, every time. I said to you that I had a repair. I went from Series 0 to Series 1. The repair was that the entire face of the watch just hinged off suddenly. Right. I think that was a Friday night manufacturing problem rather than me hitting anything. With that exception, there isn't, there isn't even a smudge 
on my watch and never has been. And I get the cheapest I possibly can every time. So, you know. Um, I don't know what it is. Okay. And you work out too. I see that there are days where it says William finished a workout. He walked around for five minutes. I see those notifications. Okay. Thank you for that. Wait a minute. The other day, <laughs> I noticed my activity ring went around four times Whoa, on the day. So wow. there. I can't remember which dog I'd given the watch to, but, you know, I thank them. <laughs> oh, my lights. Yes, I see it. You see the scratch? Oh. I will put it I would the not be able to unsee that. No. Nope. Every time. You cannot see it. But then I also feel like the Apple Watch Ultra is supposed to be that, right? It's supposed to be the rugged thing that you hit into stuff and you just keep going. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that. Uh, yes, that's... I'm sorry, that's rotten, actually, because no, that would no, stick in my mind if it were mine. So, okay. No, no, it's totally fine. Our listeners can enjoy it as a chapter art for this brief moment and uh, see if you could find the, uh, the, the scratch, the crack. That's what I did with my kitchen counter. There you go. Did the... We should... Is it one of those things where you should see the other guy, the kitchen counter shattered? <laughs> oh, yeah. The, <laughs> the granite is in pieces. It's just, it just turned to dust. It just turned straight to dust. <laughs> A random small thing. Apple actually released an app where car manufacturers can test the car key feature out uh, to see if they can actually adopt the Apple car key feature. Seems like this is a an attempt to actually get this feature out into the world, have more car support. Car key. And this is one of those things that's like home key. Like home key is a thing. There's exactly two locks that support it. So, you know, very small percentage of people that can actually Mm. take advantage of it. I I think it would be cool. It'd be great if you could use your iPhone to unlock your car. But again, my 2011 hamster mobile does not have that feature. No, I just, I think also Apple's made a mistake there because I hear it and I think, well, I've got a pair of car key trousers. You know, what what use is this to me? Wait a minute. What do you mean car key trousers? Car key trousers. It's a type of material. So corduroy, khaki, oh my goodness. jeans. Okay, doesn't travel, that joke. And I was so pleased with it. Hopefully okay. those who listen at 2x speed just passed over that joke. They didn't even hear it. Yeah, we'd be very grateful <laughs> if they did, yes. Okay. Is there any way you can rig it so that the uh, chapter jumps forward a few seconds? That would be useful. Oh, I could try, yeah, I could try to do that. Yeah, I could try to do We that. could have a podcast in which it's only you talking. No, nobody wants I'd that. I'd subscribe no. to that. No, okay. no. That's, that's an audio book. It's not a podcast. Oh, yeah. Food for thought. Okay. I, I want to mention this paid user validation. Twitter blue, you know, several months ago, Elon Musk made it so you can buy a blue check and have it seem like you or verify your identity, which could be a thing, you know, listen, you're verified as this person you claim to be. Twitter is also moving SMS two factor authentication to be a paid feature, which is weird. Like, yes, using an authenticator app is probably better than SMS. But it's like just a weird way to like force people into doing that as opposed to the SMS feature. But that aside, Facebook or Meta has now is seeking, they are considering also having paid user validation. And so if you want to skip the line or get the blue check on your Instagram profile or Facebook page without having the large audience, you can just pay to do it. And maybe you'll be forced to pay either way. I I don't know if this is like a great direction for social media networks where you can pay for a blue check. As weird as it sounds, I almost feel like the blue check in TikTok is somehow more valuable than all these other platforms now combined. Because for TikTok, you can't pay for the blue check. Like TikTok has to, like they verify a very small, you know, smaller Uh, amount of people. I didn't know. Yeah. And like when I see a blue check on TikTok, I'm like, oh, okay, this is actually a, a person of interest. Maybe I'll actually go to their profile and see what kind of content they post and whether I want to follow it. Yeah. And now I don't know about you, but like, there's a lot of blue checks out there. Listen, happy for the people who have always wanted them. And now they have a blue check. Like now I have suspicion when I see a blue check rather than a curiosity, because it's almost like, I, I really don't know. And it's not nefarious. Like I know no one's trying to do this to like seem larger than they, or whatever it is. Like I totally get you know why someone would do it. It's just a Twitter blue feature too. So if you just want to play, have other Twitter blue features, you get the blue check. But I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about this paid user validation thing. Do you have thoughts on this? It's devalued. Yeah. Something that that was fine. I didn't know that about TikTok, and I, my respect for TikTok's just you know gone up a <laughs> gone bit up. there for it. Um, <laughs> it makes sense. I'm I'm not particularly a fan of TikTok. I'm definitely not against it, and that sounds like a good thing. Yeah, they're doing so. Yeah, it's typical, isn't it? You have something good and then you overuse it or you undervalue it. Things are precious. When you create something good, you need to kind of just protect them, keep them going. And, you know, in this case, it seems like Twitter's thrown something valuable away and Facebook is racing 
to follow. I mean, I presume if Facebook takes money from me to verify me, they won't also be going around selling my data. Oh, no, they'll 100% my, sell your data everywhere. To, no, no. No, no. So, <laughs> so there's that. There's obviously. no amount of money yeah. you can pay for them to not sell your data. <laughs> I Actually, this was very strange. Uh, someone tweeted a screenshot. Um, maybe I could put this as the chapter art. Let me do it before I forget. But Basically, he was having a DM conversation on Instagram. So this is, quote unquote, a private message that he's having on Instagram with an individual. It was just one person to one person. At the bottom of the conversation, a message populated in Instagram, and it said, did this conversation support your business goals? Your wow. response helps Meta offer more relevant advertising opportunities. Yeah. And that was like... If you thought your DM conversations were not seen by Meta and Facebook or were somehow not mined for data in order to advertise to you, clearly not the case. I mean, this is more than implying. It is basically saying like whatever you're messaging people privately on Instagram DMs or Facebook messages, that text is also being crawled so that they can advertise to you. And I thought that was pretty wild. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Um, I'm, I'm even surprised that I'm surprised. But yes, that was a whoa moment. Yeah, it's, it's just one of the things. Like, I also know Google does this. I mean, if you use Gmail, yeah. especially you use free Gmail, the text of your emails is not that some person in a dark room is reading the words you're typing, but the words that you use are 100% being used for targeted ads. That's why the ads on top of the Gmail, like if you log into gmail.com, there are ads at the top if you don't pay for Gmail access or Google Workplace. And those ads are probably going to be targeted. Like, I remember I worked in the travel industry for a while. We had free Gmail accounts. Like, I got ads for cruises all the time. And that also, like, your Google search history plays into that advertising. Like, I totally get that. Cookies, tracking, and all that kind of stuff. But your Gmail content is also, like, crawled for data. So, like, it's all of it. You're saying all of this for traveling. things remind me that I had a moment on a London Underground thing where I was scribbling all these notes down on a piece of paper. This is how long ago it was. And I had this funny feeling that somebody was watching me. There's this uh, drunk um, Australian woman, I think, who I later learned out was a security guard, but she's not on the tube. She was just there being drunk. And I actually wrote down on the paper, are you reading this? And she leant over and said, what's that word? And it was, you know, nothing's private at all. Wow. You know, I see so many... TikToks. I know you've probably, you're not on TikTok, right? Like you don't browse that. No, I've been on a couple of times for research purposes. And each time, the very first thing I see, I, I've actually found a bit uncomfortable. Well. About it. And I'm thinking, why, why have you chosen to show me that kind of thing? So I've not explored it properly. I think they really try to see if you're going to fall into the, the traps, as they say. Uh, and then they'll just keep showing them to you algorithmically. But I do see uh, mm. some TikToks where there'll be a video of someone like zooming in on it, like they're sitting in a stadium or something, and they're zooming into someone texting on their phone <laughs> so much so that you can read the text message conversation. Ouch. And it is wild <laughs> and hilarious yeah. and sad, like oh. so many of these conversations. Oh, I'm cringing on behalf of every text I've ever sent. Okay. There was one where the impl it seemed like it was maybe a boyfriend and girlfriend communicating, and it's the guy holding his phone. And you could just see him scrolling through this book length text messages on his iPhone. And the comment would just be like, it's over, bro. <laughs> like, what? Oh. <laughs> it's over. But it's, you know, okay. and the nothing is private mm. uh, train of thought. Like, if you're ever sitting in a stadium, yeah. I don't know. It's, just look over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. yeah it's, it's, it's cringy. This is an episode of worry for me. So thank you. Okay. No, stop worrying. <laughs> stop it. Just don't plug into USB ports and hotel rooms. That's all. Right. And yeah, don't get kitchen islands. Right. All of these don't things. Don't text in it a stadium. Uh, don't uh, walk under a ladder. Yes. Don't scribble on paper on the underground. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, we should. There's a list yeah. somewhere. <laughs> There's yeah. a list. Uh, there might be a massive Apple store coming to Miami, which would be just a few hours from me. Apparently, Apple just signed a lease at Miami World Center to build the largest Apple store in the world. The exact location is to be determined. But it could be the Jewelry Box. I guess that's like a code name for one of these buildings on Northeast 8th and 1st Avenue. Let me tell you, if this comes to fruition and Apple builds the largest Apple store in the world, I will be there on launch day. Opening day, I will drive down and I will probably drive down the night before and stay or something. But anyway, I will be there for this store opening. I've never been to a store opening. I've not like, you know, experienced that. I've been to like the product 
launches like the mm. you know iphone launch day and like picked up my iphone yeah but never a store opening and i would 100 percent go so i'm excited i hope it happens largest apple store i mean come on the only thing is it's just apple only sells so many things so when i went into the london store and it was all out you saw it in one glance it just they're just gonna have more tables of imax and more tables of iphones really? and well, William, I mean, they sell an experience <laughs> the apple store is an experience like none other Okay, could, could you drop the advert voice there? That was just creepy. <laughs> it was like, a, in a world. Yes. Uh, that is, uh, but, uh, you know, listen, maybe by the time the store is built, they'll have an entire VR demo room where you go in there. Oh, so by the time they've built the massive store, you could instead put on the headset and pretend you're in a massive store. Well, but if you I... want to sit inside the Apple car, you have to go to Miami oh, World true. Center Apple Store. And then you could just hop in. You could you could test drive in the store. No, that's that's not a real <laughs> Yes, you could. Couldn't you? <laughs> that's not a thing. Yeah, they're gonna have a test track in the store. That's how big this thing's gonna be. It's gonna be amazing. Oh, have you seen those cruise ships where they have um, uh, like water slides and go kart tracks? Oh yeah. That extend oh. out over the sides of the ship. They could do that on the top floor outside the. You building. want to talk about fear inducing, William? I would never yeah. ever. <laughs> never would I do that. I don't care if 1,000 people did it and there was never an issue. I would not do a water slide on a cruise ship that goes out over the ocean and back in. I would not do that. I think I would, actually. Just, you would. I, mm, I think you're scared I would. of plugging yes, your iPhone into I a think... hotel USB port now, but you're fine sliding in a precarious tube of plastic over the open ocean. Well, frankly, the lamp fear is very new. It hasn't bedded <laughs> okay. in yet. And You're I haven't done a cruise. So, you know, okay, uh, right. give me a few more minutes to think about it, and then I'll start panicking. Okay, so. very good. Uh, well, so that's the Apple Store. I will be there. I hope that uh, comes to fruition, and I'll be there on opening day. Maybe I'll meet Tim Cook. Maybe I can do a, get, get my selfie with Tim Cook. The Bing iPhone app has now brought ChatGPT to a mobile device. Of course, you could use ChatGPT in Safari if you really wanted to, but... If you want to try ChatGPT, you know, Microsoft is doing this huge integration and the Bing app now lets you do some of that AI chat stuff. I'll also mention Notion, which is like the note-taking database research tool. It's free. You can use Notion for free individually. And there's actually a trial of Notion AI. So you can use some of the AI features for free. And then if you want to keep using it in Notion, it's $10 a month. But Notion AI is now a thing. Bing app, like, AI and this whole chat GPT phenomenon is here to stay. I've used it a couple of times. Like it can be a useful tool for sure. I feel like I, I kind of could feel William's opinion on this before I even ask, but uh, what do you think? You know, you're a writer, William. You like, mm -hmm. that's like a thing that you're due, that you're known for. Well, how do you feel about this? Like, do you, do you want to use it? Are you motivated? It's another tool. Um, I, I have actually tried to use it, but everywhere I try is chat GTB is maxed out. Yeah. And, I've even I even signed up to the Bing waiting list, which I thought I would never ever do, uh, to try it out. It's going to be a, a, another tool in our arsenal. Yeah, I think. I mean, right now, you know, the thing with writing is, of course, it's not just the words you use; it's the words you don't use. It's uh, everything underneath the subtext, and what I see tends to be lacking that for mm. it. So I don't see it as a replacement for writers, but I see it as something that we will be able. She's like, I've interviewed lots and lots of AI artists in graphics fields and things like that. And they all say it becomes another paintbrush, another tool, but it's still them through it. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see where it takes this. Where writers can take this will be brilliant. I agree. I, I do think it is a tool just like, you know, it is, it is a fancy tool and it is a very compelling and interesting tool and a little bit of a black box, you know, because it's, you know, how does it work? What all, What is it all doing in the background is a little more mysterious. But again, like to help through writer's block, to come up with SEO friendly title ideas after you've already written a piece and you're kind of like tired of thinking, like all those little use cases. And as it gets better and better, like it's a compelling tool. It's really cool. All right. I wanted to talk to you about this, the last topic here, William, because I tweeted this idea out. I wanted to see what you thought. You know, I'm already worrying. No, no, no. This this will not induce any new fears for you, William. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, there's a limit to how many fears no, I can no, have. No, no, no. No new fears. Okay. I was listening to the All Consuming Podcast with Adam Lissagor and Noah Kalina. They just talk about random stuff. It's, it's a fun show. But Noah Kalina was talking about devices that have a soul. And he was comparing one of his, like, 
Sony cameras that takes amazing pictures, you know, awesome autofocus. Like it's an incredible device, but he was like, but it doesn't really have a soul. And he compared that to one of his DJI drones that feels like whimsical and like wonderful. And, you know, it's fun to use. And like that clearly has a soul and, you know, so in a very like technological (laughs) term when we're talking about soul, but I tweeted and I was thinking about, let me think about Apple products. You know, I feel like that is one of the things, you know, whimsical has been used to describe Apple software and products or delightful, like these words that I think imply that they have a soul. Like when you use it, there is almost like a, an aliveness to interacting with these devices and it makes it a joy to use. It makes it fun to use. And so someone, or Noah Kalina, the person I'm talking about, actually tweeted back and he was like, has there been any Apple devices without a soul? <laughs> So I said, well, beside their double A recharge battery device, which I don't think has a soul, he was asking about like, what about the airport express or the airport extreme, which was a hockey puck mouse on the iMac that's that came from a different direction altogether. Okay. Yeah. But I think Mm. I even think that hockey puck mouse had a soul like that thing had a personality, even if it was like not fun to use. And I, like even the magic mouse for all the complaining that people do about how you have to recharge it like a turtle and you have to turn it over and you can't use it while it's recharging. Like using a magic mouse, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. A lot of people use, you know, the Logitech MX master or whatever, but like I find the the magic mouse to have a personality. Like it, it it's, uh, you know, it's got some whimsy when you scroll with two fingers and tap with two fingers on it. You know, it's pretty cool. And I think the airport express I don't know if you ever had this model, but there was the Airport Express model that had a headphone jack in and a USB port. You could plug external hard drives to it and access them over the wireless network of your house. And you can plug in bookshelf speakers. This is funny. The the Airport Express had a line in and the HomePod doesn't. But anyway, you could get an Airport Express, plug in a pair of bookshelf speakers. I had a pair of Bose bookshelf speakers and you could send audio to that Airport Express and it played through the speakers. And you could even do it with an Apple TV. That's actually what I used for a long time. I would watch on my Apple TV, send the audio wirelessly to a pair of bookshelf speakers through the Airport Express, and that was our listening experience, and it was pretty good. And so I feel like even that weird Wi-Fi device, which, you know, look at all the people still calling for Apple to make Wi-Fi routers again. I feel like those had a soul, but I don't know. Well, do, do you feel like this conversation is even a thing? Like, would you agree that, like, there are Apple devices that have a soul and possibly some who don't? I am astonished that I get to say this, but I've got previous here. I am a lapsed Catholic, so we know from souls, <laughs> you know from and or we used to. Anyway, uh, it's been a long time. I'm going to ask you which Apple device is in purgatory next. That's what I'm going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> is it the Mac Pro? Is the Mac Pro? Oh. Just kidding. Just kidding. Too close. <laughs> Too close. So what do you? Yeah. What do you think? Hmm. I don't know. What do you? What do you think about this conversation? Well, I noticed you. St- Started using synonyms there. Instead of soul, you were sometimes saying personality. Right. And I think it's more clear that there is a personality to some of them. I think you can feel the the care that goes into this. Right. Right, but I, uh, who was I talking to just recently about this tiny, tiny difference between a, a Mac and a PC over some particular thing. And you realize that what it was is that Apple thought about it just a little bit more. <laughs> and... <laughs> Microsoft tends to, does it do it? Yeah, fine. Can you actually use it? It doesn't matter. With Apple, it's, will you use it? Oh, what's going on? And I think that embodies that care. You know this thing that Windows and PC management design is what color a thing is, and Apple knows that it's it's everything about how you use something. Right. I think that is what gives things a personality at least. And I can see a soul... I'm struggling to think of one that I irrefutably in my mind think has a soul, but the the Mac SE 30 that I started out on, that felt mm. something. Maybe Mac OS yeah. does. I don't feel it on my phone. So Well, I, th- I think iOS and the iPhone is like one in the same because, yeah, absolutely. you know, even I, iOS only runs on the phone now. iPad OS is what's on the iPhone, on the iPad. Mm. So I do feel like it is like a, a, a unified device. Mike Worthley, our editor, said the devices that didn't have a soul were the PowerBook 1400, Performa 4400, and the G3 Molar. Oh, <laughs> oh good God, I'd forgotten that I one. Would, yes. I would have to Google those. Like, I Googled the uh, the PowerBook 14, 
uh, 40 or the 1400. And I was like, yeah, that looks soulless, but I also don't know if it just looks old. You know, I, I didn't know. So I was just kind of thinking like mm. iPod era forward. Have there been Apple devices without a soul? You know, I feel like even HomePod, you know, just, just feeling the affinity people yeah. have both for the OG HomePod and now the new one, AirPods, like all of these devices that seem just, you know, oh, these are just headphones or these are just speakers. And it feels so weird. Like this is like the most Apple aficionado, apple thing to even like discuss. Like no Android user is probably thinking about their Galaxy S23 Ultra as having a soul no. uh, because it doesn't. It's a robot. It doesn't have a soul. But actually, I just remembered who I was talking to. A friend is a television writer here in the UK. I, I, I hope she doesn't mind. I'm, I'm going to say she's about 60 now. And I've always known she's been a PC user. And she said to me she wanted to switch to a Mac. And she's such a PC user. I was actually advising her against it. You know, you know it. <laughs> you, lo you love your machine. And she said, no, nobody loves their PC. Right. But everybody seems to love their Macs. I want to try it. And I realized in that moment, yeah, plenty of people don't like Max at all. But yeah, that's broadly it, isn't it? Nobody tends to love a PC. No, no, it's, it's, mm, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's weird. You know, even I'm thinking, I'm looking at Apple's like just products, you know, like the Mac mini for as utilitarian True. and plain as that device might be, even that device has personality. I mean, just look at all the love it got as soon as it got an M2 chip. Like mm. nothing about the outside changed at all. And people are like, this is the Mac to get. <laughs> you can get an M2 Pro in this thing. And and it's amazing. And there's an affinity uh, for these devices. And so. But yeah. do you have that for your Mac Studio, which is a bit like <laughs> <laughs> so mm. I I do because it's like the Mac Studio is like the heart of, of just using all the, the biological and spiritual analogies <laughs> it is the go out on a limb what do you think about it, it is <laughs> the, i mean it's the heart of my studio here that i'm recording it i mean every podcast i record goes into that machine every video goes through that machine like even even just sitting there i'm like staring at it right now and like yeah it's a big chunk of aluminum but it's also like what makes everything come alive in the room that i'm in yeah. right now and so, yeah, I think even that. So that's you as well as everybody at Apple putting into it. It's people. Yeah. I remember um, it's uh, 10, 11 years or so since I stopped being full-time at different parts of the BBC. And I remember when I left, I bought a 12-inch, 12-inch, uh, a 27-inch um, iMac mm. just before the Retina ones came out. And that machine lasted me about eight years and Everything went through that. It was bliss. I would enjoy sitting down in the morning. That was definitely far more than just the computer on the yeah. desk. That was a, a world I liked being And I think there's a weird phenomenon too, like when you find an old Apple device, maybe that you forgot you had, yes. or you see someone else's old Apple device, like you see it, even if it doesn't turn on anymore, you're like, that thing was alive at some point and might still have a soul. Yeah. And it, it's just, a, it's a weird thing. Like that's why, I struggle sometimes to throw away certain Apple boxes until they just accumulate and take over the office and I got to get them out of here. But like people keep the boxes yeah. because it, I don't know if the device is the soul is the box, the body. <laughs> I've kept, I mean, I think Apple's packaging is, is very yeah. good. That's another thing, but I don't tend to keep the boxes, but um, I'm trying to declutter, but I have at least five ancient power books going back over the years and they're all dead. I'm slightly worried about the, what data is still left on them, and I want to, but I just I can't yeah. well, throw them out. I can't. I still regret so. selling my 12-inch G4 PowerBook, and as many times as I thought like just going on eBay and buying another one, it wouldn't be the same because it wasn't no, it mine. Wouldn't. Like no, it wasn't. It wasn't the 12-inch that I used for six years through college and after. Yeah, and like that was like I had a connection to it. And it sounds so weird. But like, it's just true. Like, it's it's just how you feel about it. And I think, like you said, Apple, this is what Steve Jobs used to talk about. Apple makes devices so other people can create with them. Yeah. And I think that is still the focus. And you just look at, I was just talking about like Final Cut the other day on Twitter. Like, what an amazing application. Like, Final Cut is so, so good. Yes. And it's like, as much as editing videos could feel like work, it does as much as it can to help it not feel like work, mm. to make it feel like an easy process and fluid and 
give you that whimsy while you're even using the software. And so it lets you think about the the editorial decisions rather than what is the button I need to right. press, how long will it take to render. Um, the, I've heard pilots say things like um, thinking what you want the aircraft to do is enough to make it happen. <laughs> like you don't have to yeah positively move the joystick. Your thought is enough. You've just moved it enough. Yeah, helicopters, for example, are so delicate. Every, one touch on this control requires a correction on the other one and all that stuff. And, and we don't have any of that with things like Final Cut Pro. It just frees you to do what it is you want to do. And I think that's, uh, that is definitely an Apple thing. But I had not thought of any of this, and I think you're oh, right. Man, that's fun. Well, listeners, let us know. If we forgot an Apple device, that the lack to soul... <laughs> Let us know. Uh, or the one that has the most soul of all. I don't know. And uh, and which ones are in purgatory? You can uh, help us figure that out too. I, I do think uh, a certain Apple Watch Ultra with uh, a bash on the side is is in purgatory. And you should probably probably get rid of it. I'll look after it for you if you <laughs> yeah. want to re- I s- replace it. I saw it that coming or, from or, yesterday. Or yeah. yeah. I saw, I saw I that know. coming. Okay. Had to yeah, try. Yeah. Okay. Listeners, let us know what you think. You could tweet at William and I or Mastodon us. It's been very active on Mastodon. So thank you all. It's been fun to engage with you there. And as always, thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.